Morning everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you these three recipe journals that I have just completed. Now, if you have seen my Betty Crocker cookbook journal video, which is really popular on my um, channel, it's probably my most watched video. Um, and if you like that style, then I try to kind of replicate it with these ones here. So these journals here have three signatures. <clears throat> Um, that are put together with waxed thread. They are hardcover, so the covers have been made with an old encyclopedia and they have a fabric spine. They have approximately 170 pages, so that's about 340 to 350 pages back and front. Um, and it's approximate, so you know, there might be more or less in each one. Each one's um, got the same kind of uh, items within them just in different orders and some of them have some different things in them as well um, but like my Betty Crocker cookbook journal and like all of my other journals everything in these um, journals is recycled and vintage and um, <clears throat> and original so there's no printables or um, uh, new items or purchased items everything is completely original so you'll have to excuse me, I have a bit of a cough at the moment <clears throat> um, and that's why I'm <laughs> talking a little bit quiet, quieter. I'm going to show you the first one and do a bit of a, uh, like a bit of a talk through of it. Um, and then the other two, I'm going to put some music over and just do a flip through. These are going to be available in my Etsy store tonight. So um, around, oh, I'd say 7 p.m. Australian Western Standard Time. So definitely visit my Etsy store, Picky Pop, um, if you would like to purchase any of these. I also have some um, vintage food ephemera packs available on my Etsy store at the moment as well. So if you're looking at purchasing one of these, you can also uh, purchase one of the food ephemera packs to add a little bit more detail to these journals as well. Or if you're looking to make your own cookbook journal, those food ephemera packs are perfect as well. I might even show them at the end of this video and then you guys can see <clears throat> what's in them. So let's start with this one here. <clears throat> So this one's kind of a bit of a 1950s kind of <coughs> front cover, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> and the lady on the front, the lovely lady on the front, is actually from an Australian Home Journal uh, magazine from the 1950s. And the back is from a uh, cookbook, I think, from the 1960s. The back is just blue. <clears throat> and each one of the books has these um, metal book corners just to protect the corners <clears throat> please keep in mind as I go through these journals that because all the papers are original they are the paper, the paper is very fragile so please please keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase one of these journals that the paper is not in um, pristine condition it's brittle it's old it's got foxing on it it has maybe some stains on it um, as you would expect from old cookbooks but I think that's what kind of gives it its charm. So each of the journals have a <clears throat> vintage book plate, which is actually adhesive on the back. I don't know if the adhesive still works because they're so old, but you can um, definitely glue the book plate wherever you would like. And of course, a, <clears throat> a uh, business card as well. The paste down pages of this one in particular have a 1930s handwritten recipe for East Scalloped Beans and that comes from an original 1930s handwritten recipe book. These pages here, <clears throat> each of the journals starts with this page and they're a page from a um, Raleigh's Good Health Guide. I'll show you it. it. So this is the um, book that it's from. <clears throat> it's a 1955 almanac and cookbook. And so you've got March 1955 in this one here. <clears throat> I've included lots of lined paper so that you can put your own recipes in this book. <clears throat> so we've got a page from Kelvinator um, Refrigerator in Instruction Manual. Some recipe page books. We've got a lovely little tuck spot here with some yummy looking jam shortbreads. And inside I have tucked a handwritten recipe 
for kosher dill pickles. And the other side has a pocket as well. And I've created this little um, hand stitched little journal notebook made from a Cadbury recipe book. And there's lots of space to put your own recipes or your own notes in there. <clears throat> recipe books, recipe books. This is actually um, some note paper. I don't even think it's a recipe, to be honest. I think it's teacher notes, actually. But I liked the um, handwritten notes or handwritten, the hand writing. <laughs> I love a little picture of a house. So this is a page from a Golden Circle um, pineapple recipe book and it's a fantastic book and you'll see a lot of the pages of the book inside these journals. This is a little picture from an Australian Home Journal magazine. Some really, really fragile old recipe paper from the recipe book. An envelope, pocket, some coffee stain paper. I love this uh, die cut from a magazine for, for Rose's Lime Marmalade. It's very bright. And this is actually a picture that came from a photography magazine. If you've seen my latest video on the stack of photography magazines that I recently purchased, this was on the back of one of those magazines. It's an ad, it was an ad for Fuji film, um, a camera film. Some more of those fantastic recipes. That looks like a a jello salad or something, jelly salad. <clears throat> An old refrigerator. You can see some of the yummy, look at the <laughs> some of the yummy things in there. <clears throat> so lots of lined paper. You really will be able to fill this journal up with your own ephemera or your own recipes. There's enough pages in here to last you a lifetime of recipes, I think. Some sandwiches there. <clears throat> An ad for margarine. Fondue. What is a vintage recipe book without some fondue? Lots of ledger paper. <clears throat> I love this page. It looks like oh, some kind of pizza pie or something. So yeah, like I said, lots of space to put your own ephemera. Here's a little wheat fix die cut. I love that. Uh, each one of the journals comes with one of these vintage strawberry playing cards. A little cut out of a recipe card, vintage recipe card. Another one of those Raleigh's Good Health Guide almanacs. And we're up to the second signature. Second signature on the first page has a piece of vintage wallpaper trim. A visitor's book. This was an ad for Sunbeam Mixmaster, so there's a little bit of the ad here. I was really sad to give this piece up, actually. I would have loved to put it in my own journal. A page from the Golden Circle recipe book. I love that colour. <clears throat> and this was part of the um, Mixmaster ad. So there's some of the ad here and then the rest of the ad <laughs> I put here. This is a, a page from Susie's New Stove. If you know Susie's New Stove, actually, I'll show you the cover. <clears throat> I'm gonna be making some more vintage cookbooks um, that are ring bound or spiral bound <clears throat> with the covers. So these pages, you'll notice a lot of them in these journals and they've come from Susie's New Stove here. page from an embroidery book. 
page from a Better Homes and Gardens recipe book. This is a page from a vintage children's colouring in book. This picture here you'll see on the other side when we get to the other side of it, but it's actually a girl having a picnic, she's eating a sandwich, and on the other side is a cucumber um, colouring in, which I find really weird. Why would you put a cucumber to colour in for a kid? I don't think kids would be very excited about colouring in a cucumber. It's one colour. <laughs> This is a page from a 1956 Women's Weekly magazine for homemade chutneys and pickles. And you can see a lady there and it looks like she's doing some gardening in a little greenhouse or something. Um, and then I like this, which wire for you, which is really interesting. Do you pack a lunchbox? <laughs> a page that shows some pork and lamb cuts. And a bit of a timetable for roasting meat. Another lovely colourful page from a recipe book and this one is blank on the back so perfect for adding your own notes or your own ephemera. Another page from Susie's new stove and this is a double page which is the binding page. <clears throat> the other side of that recipe book picture. <clears throat> the other side of that women's weekly page. Here's a little die cut of a cheesecake, which looks so yummy. That cucumber page. And you can see the other side of that colouring in book. It's some birds and she's eating a sandwich there. This is a licorice all sorts playing card. Another embroidery page. <clears throat> this was a big ad for butter. And so I cut it out and turned the uh, butter part of it into a little pocket and then inside oh sorry not a pocket a little uh, tuck and inside there is an ad for scotch whiskey little pages this is a cutout from an Australian home journal magazine Susie's new stone this was the back page of a I think it was like 101 leftover meals or something. Anyway, that was the back page of the book. <laughs> and here's another one of those little notebooks I made from a Cadbury's uh, recipe book page. So you've got lots of lined paper to write your notes and your recipes in there. The tropical magic in cooking. <clears throat> and that is the end of the second signature. And then we have our third signature, another page from Susie's new stove. A little coupon for any drum of bird's custard powder. Valid until June 1st, 1979. That's really cool. <clears throat> Cut out from that same custard ad. Some Cotty's jelly crystals. Do you know your pasta? Now I have... Um, paper clipped this in because it's very very fragile so it's a 1930s ad from a magazine for Parsons custard powder you can see that it's very soft it's in very uh, fragile condition and on the back is an ad for Cadbury's cocoa so I've just tucked it in there Let's make sure it's tight in there very good recipe for meatloaf what is a cookbook without a recipe for meatloaf meatloaf is not my kind of food <laughs> lovely fruit page this is a wonderful full spread um the middle of the signature and it is a plantation salad from that golden circle pineapple recipe book some more fantastic recipes from the pineapple book so the whole recipe book is actually a, a whole like every recipe includes pineapples which is very, very 60s kind of recipe book. Liver pate, cheese dip, some golden circle cucumbers. This is a little cutout from a Sunbeam catalogue for a cooker and deep fryer. And you'll see some of these little cutouts in the other journals as well. Some Kellogg's cornflakes. Omelette recipe, mushroom plan, some more of those lovely handwritten pages. 
a little envelope to put your own ephemera in. And the last page is just from Susie's new stove. And that brings us to the end. On the back paste down page is a recipe for waffles. And that is the first journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other two. I'm going to do very quick flip throughs of them. I won't be talking over them, but if I find something interesting, then I might, I might do.
So they are three journals that will be available in my store tonight at 7 p.m. Australian Western Standard Time. So please do your own um, time zone converting. Um, but they will be on my Etsy store. And I did tell you that I would show you some of the food ephemera packs that I've got at the moment. So I'll show you those now. Um, just, yeah, just cause. <laughs> So this is one of the packs. You get a whole bunch of different uh, ephemera items from the 60s and 70s. I love the look of that cake there, Christmas cake. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of things that you can create your own ephemera with, all original, cut from magazines and books, but mainly magazines. I got about a couple of years ago, I was very lucky to get a huge collection of 60s and 70s women's magazines and from there it's taken me two years but I have managed to cut out them all <laughs> and provide you with all of this ephemera so it's definitely a good opportunity this a good opportunity to snap up some original vintage ephemera to add to your own cookbook journals or if you want to add them as an add-on to one of my journals, you are more than welcome to. I love the colours, especially in the 70s. Um, in the 70s pages, the colours of the dishes are just amazing. Look at that. Pineapple upside down cake, I think. Trifle. Australians will recognise all of these cheeses. Oh, I love this one. It's a little 60s lady from the 60s in front of her stove. Some food die cut. An ad for a cookbook. It's kind of grid work cake and a punch. I'll show you the other two packs. There are, I think, mm, don't quote me on this, four or five packs on my Etsy store. Some of them might have been sold already. Um, but I generally try to always have food packs available, although, like I said, I've just finished cutting up this magazine, so for a while there probably won't be any. Um, so definitely snap them up <laughs> if you are interested. Um, otherwise, yeah, let me know what you thought of my cookbook journals. Um, let me know which one is your favourite and maybe what theme journals you'd like to see me make next time. All right, have a fantastic day. Bye.